Okay, so welcome to the series on calculus in a nutshell. So this series is going to be pretty much about explaining single variable calculus in a series of short lessons. So in today's video, we're going to introduce the differential calculus through the concept of a gradient on a function. So let's start out with drawing a function. So this is just going to be a generic function. It could be something like a parabola. And then let's say that we're interested in finding, so let's say y is a function of x. <coughs> and we have x here. Let's say we want to find the gradient between any two points. So let's draw a line between two points, like this. So this right here, that's going to be point x1, point x2. And then this right here is going to be point y1 and coordinate y2. <coughs> so we know from pre-calculus and from elementary linear equations that the gradient of a function is simply the rise over the run, so basically just that. So in this case, the gradient of the function, which is represented by delta y over delta x, is simply going to be the difference in those coordinates. So for the top one, we're going to have y1, y2 minus y1, and then x2 minus x2, x1, sorry. So this is going to be the gradient. Now, what's going to happen when we shrink that area? So let's say that we're interested in finding the gradient of a line that passes through two points, but those two points are much closer together, so something like this, and the line goes like that. So in that case, we're going to have x1 and x2 are going to be closer together and then we're going to have y2 and y1 closer together as well <coughs> so now the gradient is going to be the same so let's see what would happen if you continue to shrink this little gap in between so let's call this gap delta x let's see what happens when you continue to shrink this further and further well obviously these two lines are going to meet at some point as this approach is zero and then at that point you would actually have you would actually have the gradient of the function at a single point and that's a very important definition because if this goes to zero then essentially it means that those two lines are going to intersect or are going to be collinear and then you're going to have the gradient at a single point on that function so what's going to happen there is that you're essentially going to have a gradient that is going to tell you how fast the function is changing at every single point on that function so for example if you look at this point here and you draw a tangent line over here you notice that the gradient is fairly low it's almost zero but if you draw another point here and you draw a tangent line going through that point to that function then this gradient is a lot larger than this gradient and that one so what this is telling you is that you can derive a function of those gradients that will tell you how fast the function is changing at every single point of x and that's a very important concept because when we're analyzing dynamical systems or essentially anything that changes over time or with respect to a specific variable, we can actually find how fast that function is changing. So the rate of change will be defined by the gradient at each of those points that we choose. So this is where the concept of a derivative comes in. Because let's say, for example, that we want to find so obviously delta y let's replace it by something else let's say that we want to find delta of f of x because y is a function of x so what i'm going to do is i'm going to represent this as f of x plus h so h is just a little step forward from the previous point and this is going to be minus the previous point which is just f of x so basically x plus h is just going to be a very small increment in x represented by this change and then what's delta x going to be well delta x is just going to be delta x essentially so the gradient at any point the gradient at any point will become 
delta y over delta x and we're just going to use this definition now so we're going to have f of x plus h minus f of x over delta x now obviously we want to find an expression for the function as this um, thing goes forward in time actually I'm going to replace this h so let's just use the same notation for both let's say that the increment is just delta x because that's what it should be uh, instead of h so h is just equal to delta x so the increment in x is just delta x so this is the function that we're going to have here so what happens when you take the limit of this as delta x goes to zero well, if you take the limit, you're no longer working with finite quantities, you're working with infinitesimals. And an infinitesimal is just a number that is so small that it can be considered infinitely small, but not quite zero. It is not quite zero. So, the infinitesimals, so they're essentially just like differences in points but are going to be so small that we need to represent it by dy and dx. And this is going to be equal to the limit of this function as delta x goes to zero. So this is essentially what we have here. And this is what we call a derivative. A derivative is nothing but the gradient of the function at every single point of x that we choose. So it is a local concept because we need to choose a specific point about which we need to or we want to calculate the gradient. But this is the formula that is going to allow us to derive uh, a general expression that will simply be a function of x and just by plugging values of x into it we can find the value of the gradient at that specific point. And in the next video, I'm going to show you an example of how to use this formula to find the gradient of some very simple functions.